this video is going to be quite long. Uh, it's about 15 minutes. Try to keep videos under 10, but there's a lot to go over. So it's an important one, and thanks for watching. Okay, this video we're going to be talking about family naming conventions um, that we, we particularly use. So we never use any hosted um, or specific hosted families. By specific hosted, I mean um, wall, ceiling. When you go to make a new family, um, I can show you here, there are several different types of base um, that it has. So for example, you have generic model ceiling base, generic model floor base, pattern based, line based, roof based, wall based, all of those types of specific bases um, will not work through a link, which means that we cannot host to a linked wall or a linked floor or a linked ceiling. Um, so those are extremely problematic. And so we do not have any of those in our family pack. If you find any um, family that somehow makes it way, its way into your model, um, that says WB on it, then that means wall-based. Anything that's other than FB for face-based is undesirable. Um, also, it goes without saying that you really don't want to download families from the internet or get families from other people because they can have all kinds of things that go wrong with them and it's very hard to keep it consistent um, with our other families if we download or get it from other places. Um, a number of things that we do with our families when we make them, make them different than what you'll find on the internet or what you'll find out of the box. Number one is their symbols. Number two are parameters. We use a lot of shared parameters and there's no way that um, other people can use our shared parameters. That's something that we have to do in-house. Um, and we also make sure we don't have bad hosting and we also make sure that the electrical connectors are um, set up correctly. So those are some reasons that you don't want to use outside sourced families. So you don't want to use any um, hosted families and you won't use any hosted families uh, except for face based if you're using our family pack. All of the light fixtures that are ceiling mounted are face based and that is so that they can find the ceiling, the family can find the ceiling when you're placing them. Um, and again, face base is okay. So if you find FB, that's perfectly fine. So you may find in your model that you occasionally in annotation symbols, um, or should not be anywhere else, um, some families called ideas and those families are only there because they are on our legend page and we haven't bothered to change them so um, you don't need to use those um, and all of the ones that you will use will start with the words IG and or letters IG that's how you can tell that those are really good families for you to use the first thing I want to talk about is how we label 2d um, families. So 2D families that are for the single line diagram will have SLD in front of them. Um, families that you use as a symbol without any 3D content will have IG and then annote for annotation in the front. If it has annotation in the front um, then they'll group and you know that this is a type of annotation that you can use by itself. Other types of families may be named with annotation at the end and generally we use um, these annotations or if they don't have anything on them and you see them in the annotation options generally those are families that are nested in other families and we don't use them by themselves so again look for this annote at the beginning for using 2d symbology lastly we're going to look at tags so tags um, will say ig and then tag in the front and or we'll say tag somewhere, generally having the tag in front. And these mean that they are smart tags. And tags is a very specific word in Revit that means um, that it's going to elicit a parameter value from whatever you are tagging. Uh, so those are uh, your tags. 
Next, we are going to look at 3D families, which are broken up into the various different categories. Um, and specifically, I want to talk about electrical equipment because they have a very specific way of behaving once you're in project world. We have a kind of base model for our families that we then copy to make other families to act a certain way. So if you want to use the inverter family, this is going to generate a single column panel schedule. So if you want to have a double column inverter, you can use Elect Gear Other. Um, Elect Gear Other is a multi-purpose family that you can pretty much use for all kinds of things. It is set up as um, a two column schedule configuration. So again, if you want an inverter with a two column schedule configuration, you can use that. Our switchboard is the one type of family that has a single, the inverter and the switchboard have a single column panel configuration. All of the rest have a two-sided panel configuration that you're most used to. And I'll show you an example of that in our, in our templates. Um, so if we look at our panel schedule templates, um, you'll see that the panel configuration is two columns with circuits across. That's our default panel and our distribution panel um, defaults. And it's set up to have circuit one, circuit two, circuit three, circuit four, as you've been used to. Um, but if you look at the uh, one column type, um, it only has one column. And it's not going to have um, multiple different X's for all its poles. It's, gonna, it's just going to say one pole or two pole or three pole in this column. So that's really the difference between the different types of electrical gear that you'll find in your um, family pack or in your family browser. Um, so when you're working um, in a background and you find your electrical room and you want to fill it out with these different families, we're going to show you a little bit about how families work in addition to family naming conventions. So first, um, just a little digression, we're going to find which room is the electrical room. Go to the architecture tab and select tag room. Here's our electrical. Right now I'm in a working view, which is what I want when I'm first setting it up. And then we'll go check out the sheet view and add any tags that we need to add. Next, we'll go to the systems tab and place an electrical equipment. When you first place a switchboard, you'll need to edit type to make it the shape that you want, the size and everything you can edit. Top zone height is how much of the access zone above, how tall that is. The front zone depth you can see here, that's how deep the front access zone is. And if you want to add a back zone, you can also do that by scrolling all the way down and click back zone as exists and you can edit how deep that is as well. You can see here we have an access zone, but if you go to a sheet view, that same access zone will not show up and that's because that's because in the VG settings um, for sheet views we have the access zone here turned off. Also another note that you can turn off um, in the type parameters you can turn off the housekeeping pad. It's six inches wide and that's also something that you can change. Before you circuit you'll need to edit all sorts of the parameters like what load it is and what distribution and all that stuff. Um, but for now we're just looking at how to use it. So next we want to place a panel board. So these work with a cling. So another part of the naming convention is that you'll see either cling, free, or face-based. Those are the only three kinds we have. And if there isn't anything after it, that means it's free. These are cling, which means that they're not hosted, but if you hover over a wall like I am now, you'll see it turns blue. And also, if you hover over an area that has a diagonal component and you press the space bar or some other not even diagonal, it's going to align with whatever you're hovering over. Um, and that's really, really useful if you need to align to something non-orthogonal. So I'm just pressing the space bar and I can align to these portions of the room. Um, the cling is what we used instead of a wall-based. Um, and the best part about this, instead of being wall-based hosted is, or even face-based hosted, is that 
you can select all of your equipment and copy it and paste it without having to worry about taking its host with you. And you can move these out of the room without their host and nothing bad happens. But if you ever want to move it back, you can find that blue cling line. The same cling works with our receptacles as well. So once you have everything that you need, and also I mean, I'm grabbing um, a panel that also has the same cling. When you're ready to arrange your room, you can see, you can easily see um, where your axis zones overlap. Um, you can use the align tool to get things right how you want them aligned. Um, and it's really, really useful to see where your access zones are overlapping or if you actually have access zones that are overlapping equipment, which you know you can't have. Um, and then once you're all ready, you can go to a power view or a sheet view, I'm sorry, and you'll see the access zones are gone. Also, when you go um, to name your panel, you do not need to type in panel in there. It will automatically add that or, well, I'll show you how to automatically add that. So let's, let's say this panel is um, AL1. When you go to edit type, the type mark you want to place in here, panel, or PNL if you like that better. Um, and this works the same as a light fixture. So when you go to tag this panel, um, we don't want free attach and we want free end. Um, it will it will add those marks. Um, also, when you go do any tag in a project because you've loaded fresh new families, they won't have their arrow on them. It's a very easy fix. Just go to leader, edit type um, in your tag, not your equipment, but your tag, and add arrow 30 degree filled. Then you'll have to do this for all your tags, but once you do it once, it will last for all the rest of the time. This is how you um, can use the equipment and how you use the cling um, and concludes our overview of naming conventions and how to use the families.